Welcome everybody to the Fantasy Golf Insider webcast and podcast. I'm Jeff Bergerson, joined as always by my partner, Zach Turcott. We're with FantasyGolfInsider.com, where we encourage you to sign up for our premium membership and have access to some of the best tools, our model articles in the industry and become a winning and profitable DFS golf player. Are you like our visual props this week? This will be really be nice for our podcast listeners. We forgot to let people know we are live from New Orleans here tonight. <laughs> yeah. so. Watching, dodging raindrops right. and storms. We're going to see if, if we get past the 20 minute mark of our podcast, we got to do the whole thing. <laughs> that's, that's the rule for <laughs> the right. night. And we might just quit after three quarters of our webcast yeah, tonight. And just so. go back to the 15 minute mark. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. This uh, broadcast is available at in podcast form. You don't have access to seeing these awesome umbrellas. But um, be sure to check us out on iTunes and Stitcher. Give us a glowing review. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Zachary, the Zurich Classic last week was a freaking disaster. Annoying as hell to stay tuned to. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Tuning back in like every couple hours, still seeing that red line on the PGA Tour app. And then looking at the weather and 80%, 100%, rain, rain, rain. And oh, then just, just trying to figure out if they're even going to get the whole thing in. I was so excited Thursday because our picks were just amazing. I, I mean, we went straight up with most of the picks. Obviously, I had a new format in terms of my column for the week, giving people kind of an example of what I did in the $3 yeah, range. Yeah, people liked it. Justin Rose cut my throat with most of those teams. But again, you know, I lose with Pocket Kings. Am I going to am I gonna not play Pocket Kings anymore? Yeah. No, I'm going to go back. I'm going to continue to play Rose because he's not going to do that week in and week out. So that was that was really frustrating. But so many of the other picks were right on in terms of bringing us huge amounts of value. Absolutely. We were all over it. You actually gave the recommendation to folks, if they were ballsy enough to do it, right. to just fade the top three players, which was genius. Worked out great. You get a guy who misses the cut in rows. That's huge. You Fowler, get Fowler was, was in the middle of the pack, so he's yep. not really a big factor. And then, you know, Jason Day takes T5, which is good, but it doesn't hurt you That's by right. avoiding him. I mean, he ends up with around 84 points. Yeah. So still really underperforms his price Absolutely. overall yep. and doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't hurt you by not having him on the team. So that worked out tremendously. We had a couple really disappointing middle of the pack guys who were in the running, looked great contending day one, and then right. just came undone in the back nine of the uh, second round Luke list. And Sean O'Hare were the guys who cut both oh, yeah. of us up yep. there a little bit. So that was pretty frustrating. And then just the delays, how slowed down the event went over oh, the next few awful. days. Bouncing back and forth. Are we going to get two rounds? Are we going to get three rounds? Are we going to get four rounds? Um, it turned out that it didn't really affect my results too much in terms of getting that last round in. I ended up being you know, up a few hundred bucks, and then I was up a few hundred bucks. So it yeah. kind of dropped down, went back way up, and then right back to where it was. So you know, overall, it was a good week. It was a winning week for us. Um, in terms of the optimal lineup, the secondary optimal lineup, I had just absolutely crushed it. The first one got a little bit broken there with Rose, but cash games, you should have been pretty good. I was two out of three with the cash games. We heard from a lot yeah. of folks that did well on cash games. Yeah. So, you know, overall, it was a pretty good week, especially considering the types of conditions that we were right. dealing with out there. The hardcore core ab absolutely killed it this week. Um, Young Young Ann with his charge on yeah. Monday was huge. Love Mark was a part of that. Kazire, it was just a stacked, I think only two or three guys out of the entire core missed the cut. Yeah. So I heard from a lot of people who did well. I'm not sure if the shortened event was good or bad for him. We heard from a lot on Twitter that people were not happy. Uh, so it, I think it hurt them, but you know, overall, pretty amazing week with the picks. So we'll try and keep it going, and uh, turn the page on Zurich. Can we kill? We these, get rid of these. Can we kill these props now? All right, let's leave New Orleans. Yeah, yeah. Do, we'll, would you ever consider just not going to <laughs> New Orleans during this time of year? Maybe that, have it a month or two later. I don't know. I mean, you'd think that might be an idea. This too. happened last year too. I remember we dealt it with the rain vividly all the time. It, you're you're looking now. We've got uh, another. Wacky wager trophy there from Brad Messersmith from uh, the uh, the degenerates over there and the podcast that they run. It is a officially now a Tony Rice jersey, <laughs> as he opposed actually, to what? As opposed to a Tom Zabikowski jersey. He actually <laughs> sent a letter, kind of pleading, begging for me to keep it as a as a Tom Zabikowski jersey. I won't read it to you because it's really long. And kind of, kind of funny. <laughs> he had some legitimate points. He though. did have some good points. A guy who can get hammered and go out and kick ass on the football field, but. 
he didn't win any national championships at Notre Dame, and Tony Rice did. So we're going to leave it as a uh, as now a Tony <laughs> Rice jersey. We won that. We had a. We have to give an asterisk this week in terms of the wacky wager. Uh, Phil knocked me off. Oh crap! It hurt me. It was another. It, and Phil, it's it's funny that I lost to Phil like that because. Phil was out with Jared at the uh, World Golf Championships out in Boston yeah. for fantasy golf, yep. cheering uh, Jared on when we got knocked off by losing Paul Casey there, right. not getting to see if he could have helped us to make a charge. So having the shortened round, he had four guys get through the cut. I had five. Unfortunately, Jason Day made a little bit of a charge yeah, today yep. while uh, the, the couple of guys that I had left, Jamie Donaldson as well as David Toms, didn't do quite so much in terms of moving up. I, one more day, one, one more day, more day smoked, yeah. and I've, I've probably got him unless Day wins the event, Right. but we'll never know now. Nope. So he wins, uh, he wins a, a little bit of a disputed victory. It's another very close loss on the season, but uh, well played. It was a fun contest. We had a lot of fun with it. And uh, like we said last week, Zurich is where Phil actually played in his right. lone PGA yeah, Tour cool. event many years back. So it was a good time. So that was the wacky wager for the week. Excellent. How about shots of the week? Oh yeah, we had an easy one. Another fun one. <laughs> for the second time this season, if you get DQ'd in an event, not once, but twice in the year, right. it's guaranteed, be, guaranteed to be shot of the week. Last time, George McNeil was DQ'd because of a non-conforming mm -hmm. club, correct? Sure. Yeah. So this week, he just flat out didn't show up for his tea time. Yeah, after round one, he was <laughs> so discouraged by how badly he finished the first round. I, I don't know what it was, but... Yeah, you didn't show up. You'd think these are basically fireable offenses for the guy's caddy at this point. You can let him get away. Oh, non-conforming club. I don't know. Maybe something got bent right. or whatever. And he left it in the bag. I, I don't know. But but when you don't show up for your tee time, that is 100% yeah. on your caddy to yeah. get you there and drag you there. Yep. So two times this season. I, I don't know what's going on with McNeil this year. Although I thought at the time, what a dumbass who could miss their tee time. But as the weekend sure. drags along and guys are warming up, playing a few holes, heading back to the clubhouse, laying around, around, watching movies, eating right. pizza, I'm playing thinking games. maybe George McNeil, uh, who's on his comfy couch at home, maybe was onto something. Yeah, he could have been. So, <laughs> but it, but amusing nonetheless. Not showing up for your tea time is pretty funny. That's. Uh, what are we gonna do if he gets DQ'd again this season? We're gonna laugh a lot. <laughs> We're gonna drink. A I think we just take shots. it straight from the bottle. I'd do that. Yeah, absolutely. For George <laughs> McNeil. As, as long that. as it's a humorous way to go, it's got to be for something funny. He's got to do something just completely out of the rules to make himself look like a buffoon again. And he seems capable. He's done it twice. So yeah. strike three. We're yeah. really going to go for it next Might time. buy some George McNeil paraphernalia. I don't even know who his sponsors are, who we'll he make endorses. Some shirts. But yeah, we'll make we some go. FGI shirts. Just <laughs> George put, McNeil. Just put DQ on the front and <laughs> yeah. McNeil on the back. Yeah, I think Beautiful. that'd be Beautiful. Yep. George right. McNeil, thank you again. Here's, a, here's the showing up at your tea time. Kind of a man after, kind of a man after my heart. I never show up on time for things either. No, that's so, true. You know, I'm, I'm that's a, and you don't I'm get sort of DQ'd the, for rolling in late to your sort of the uh, George, periscope. sort of the George McNeil of the fantasy golf world. <laughs> 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 Wonderful. Yeah, I know. I aspire for big things, right? That's right. So this week we move to the Wells Fargo Championship. In Charlotte, North Carolina, Quail Hollow Golf Club. We finally have a decent field again. Good, strong field. It's a long course, one of the longer ones we're going to see all year on the PGA Tour. 7,575 yards, par 72. Uh, it actually hosts next year's PGA Championship, which is kind of cool. It'll be interesting to see how they set up the course. Absolutely. Try to challenge them for that. Yeah, yeah that's sweet. Uh, another one of uh, these three holes that have a, a name. I, I like the, the other ones, like the, the Blue Monster, and what else do we have? The, the Bear snake, Trap. Snake Pit. Snake Pit, yeah. yeah with a few holes. This yeah. week, it's the Green Mile, uh, three of the toughest holes in golf. So that's always fun when they have uh, the, the, the tough few holes. Key stats this week, strokes gain, tee to green, strokes gain, putting, driving distance because it's so long, so I'm going to be putting some weight on that. Birdies are better, par five scoring, 
Anything else to add to that? No, I think those are basically the standard ones you're gonna want. It's gonna be a bomb show for the, for the big guys who can hit the ball. It's definitely gonna be a huge advantage. The first thing that I saw when when the prices were released is the top five guys are, are priced, five or six guys are priced accordingly, mm -hmm. expensive. But then once you get past to the five or six, the pricing isn't very tight. Really you can reasonable. get a really good roster if you fade those top five or six guys. Now it's going to be tough though. I mean, looking last week, it's three guys Absolutely. and then the rest of the field. This time, it's going to be really difficult for me to believe that the top six guys, yep. one or two, are not going to be up there and in contention. So it's really yep. just figuring out which of those one or two are going to be in there and maybe not necessarily stacking two of those guys, but pick one of those guys and then the rest there's a whole range of guys in that seven and eight K range. No doubt. I think that'll be the way lineups look. You'll have a top guy and then you'll have four to five guys there in that seven thousand. Maybe one guy in the six range and one or two around the eight. So are you rolling with Rory this week? You know, I haven't made up my mind yet. I probably won't just due to ownership concerns. I think out of the guys that are up there for the week Rory is going to be the clear-cut choice. What we've seen I think so. from a lot of the top-tier pros out there, they're not just overweighting guys. They're shoving all their chips in. So last week, we looked at a lot of the you know, higher-end players with the lineups they're building. They were 100% in on Jason Day. I right. a number of players who were 100% in on Jason yep. Day. And another a number of players who are 100% <laughs> in on Jason <laughs> Justin, Justin Rose. Yeah, yeah. No, but I mean, but Justin Rose as well. Yeah, I did, I did see one guy who was 90 something percent on ball, Yikes. just taking a flyer right there in the middle. But uh, I think that'll be the case because there isn't really a secondary guy there right. who's in the top, you know, in the 10,000 and above range who people were going to shove on. <laughs> so I think a lot of people will shove on on Rory this week. And the game just isn't quite there yet. Right. And he's so much more expensive. Yeah, 1900 more than the next highest priced guy, Ricky yeah, Fowler. And the rest of that group that I just, I, I think that Rory, I think he'll play well, but I think I will fade him. He's not going to run away with the tournament. Just huh? based on price and based on ownership. And he's just not playing quite as well as he was last year. So... Yeah, I guess I will probably end up fading Kay. Rory, so. <laughs> yeah, look for Rory to win by about six strokes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You <laughs> but who, who are first. you liking up in that top range if, you, if you're not going to go with Rory? I think a nice bounce back candidate this week is going to be Justin Rose. I think everybody is going to go up there to Rory. I think there will be some Ricky owners. I think there will be some DJ owners. Those tend to be names that are really popular. Justin Rose really killed a lot of teams. He killed all of my $3 teams last week, so I rolled him. I didn't roll them in the 300 just because I played the 300 a little different than the $3. But I thought, given myself enough salary cap maneuverability and for the number of lineups that I wanted to make, I was in on rows for that. So he killed a ton of my lineups and he hurt so many other people that everybody's going to abandon ship for the mm -hmm. most part. Yeah. And this is an event that he should do well in. So it's a good week to just move back in on him. He's and not going to be missing all those five to ten foot. I mean, yeah. that's what it was. He was terrible. I think he was minus he was minus two right. in terms strokes of strokes gained putting, putting yep. which is awful. It's way worse than than what he is typically. He's not a fantastic putter, but he's not a terrible no, putter either. No, not that bad. He's not Lucas Glover. No, bad. He's not Webb Simpson. Bad in terms of putting. So. I anticipate that this would be a good week to bounce back. His ownership numbers are going to come down. So Especially that's, with all the other options up there, too. Right. There's so many other guys that I think people could gravitate towards yep. that I will be back in for a nice bite on uh, Justin Rose. How about okay. yourself? Well, I like dropping down, actually, a little bit if you get What below. about you, though? Now, you put the spotlight on me for Ricky. <laughs> How about you? Are you going to be owning Ricky this week? Um, I probably will not own Ricky this week. If I were to own those top guys, I would say I'm going to own Rory and Dustin Johnson. Okay, so you those will go up to Rory guys. And skip over Ricky. Okay. I, I would do that. I don't know that I'm going to own a tremendous amount of Rory because I like when you drop below those top five or six guys, the, the quality yeah. that you can get for under 10K in Hideki Matsuyama at 9,300, JB Holmes at 9,100. I just think those are top level, you know, top 10 guys. And I think we got to mention Phil Mickelson. And right Phil Mickelson there. too. I mean, just, I just, I never roster <laughs> Phil Mickelson. It hurts me I really when I don't. Do it. it hurts me when I do. I don't know that I've ever owned him where he's really carried my team in a week. But he was having, he was on his way to having a great season. It looked like he was having a bit of a resurgence this year in terms of the number. Yeah. Not just top 10s, but he had a lot of top 5 finishes as well. So coming to the Masters, he was on fire. He was a lot of people's picks to do well. 
And then the winds picked up, and it completely threw him off his game. He blew the cut there. I Two know. weeks later, he comes back. He misses the cut again at a tournament. He didn't have a ton of experience at. So I think it's a nice opportunity. I think a lot of people are going to be on. They're going to see the tournament history with just one top 10 after another over and over and over I know. again. So I can't, his, owner, his ownership's going to be high. I can't anticipate him being lowly no. owned. No, but I still I still like his odds in terms of a of a bounce back week. So I will own some shares of Phil up there at the top. I well. won't. I'm gonna disagree. You're with gonna you. you're gonna be off of him this I'm week. I'm not gonna own any Phil. This is week. Phil okay? So he's on my ask. shit list. So then here's a question: Is Phil finish outside of the top twenty this week? Uh, outside of the top twenty, um, I had to make it tough. I couldn't just say yeah, top ten. I was gonna say, good God, yeah, yeah. he'll finish outside so, the top so ten. So where is he finish? Where do you have? Where do you peg Phil Megelson as far as his finishing position this week? I think maybe twentieth might be. Uh, you think that's where he's gonna? I go? think so. Yeah, okay. between fifteenth. So you and 20th. think there's some? You think he's really struggling at this? But point? But I think his floor is too low. Mm-hmm. I I, th- I think he's too big of a risk for that price. I just see too too really? many better options. What is the risk though? Is he? What is his downside? A miscut. Wow, you're gonna call that? You'd potential I'm not gonna for a say he's cut? gonna miss a cut, but I, I think he's very capable. So of you missing heard it cut. right here. <laughs> yeah. Jeffrey predicts a missed cut this week for Phil Mickelson. Oh, he says avoid yeah, him whatever, completely. I, <laughs> <laughs> I never hear from anyone when I'm off on my. Yeah, yeah. Whenever we fade a guy and and tell people not to be on him, and he does terrible, like we were off of I was off of Bubba at the match. Nobody said anything no, to me no, about no. not writing up Bubba. Yeah, but you wrote up Phil that week, and <laughs> yeah. God damn it, he missed the cut. So fuck you, you buddy. <laughs> you should you should have predicted that. I know. I should have known. <laughs> I should have known. So I, I'm not saying that I believe he's going to miss the cut. I just don't think he's a good value for his okay. price. I, I like the better options there. I also like dropping down to 8100, and I, I'm going to steal this guy from you. No, Charles Howell the third. Guy. You, know, you talked about him on our DK TV bits this week, and if you haven't checked those out, be sure to check us out on DK TV. We do several blurbs for them each week, so check that out. Just but uh, three minutes of amazing energy on each piece. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome yeah. <laughs> and intense. Uh, Charles Howell the third has been playing really great this year. He's become more of a cut maker this year than he has in the past. He's yeah. putting up top 25s. With upside. Yeah. yeah. I think he's got about a dozen top 25s already this season. His price looks good this week. Comes down after being at 8,700 last week, but the field is obviously stronger. Understood. But- the, yeah, Vegas is just not giving the guy enough credit no. right now, I don't think, no. because he's he's been up there. He just came off of an 11th place finish. He's in the mix every week. He's never going to win. We know he's never going to win. And that's he's part of the, win. That's part of the reason that win. Vegas, we're often looking at odds to win. Right. And that could definitely factor into Charles Howell. Yeah, he's probably not going to win. Mm-hmm. I mean, him and Charlie Hoffman, I think, were, were guys that never won, but look what happened to Charlie. So, yeah, it happened for Charlie. Yeah. It's it not, could happen. It's not going to happen. I'll say it again. I said it before. Charles <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> will not another ever win another tournament. <laughs> Forget about it. Here's a name at 8,000 this week that I don't think, is anyone going to own Jim Furyk this week? That's interesting. He's another guy who was an absolute course horse. He yeah. did miss last year, but before that, really great history here. Obviously, he's coming off of wrist surgery, so it's been about seven and a half months, I think, since he played in the Tour Championship. It was probably the last time that he took the course back yeah. at the middle of September. So about seven months. Um, he's at 8,000, which normally it would be a great steal. This fear could be right. a guy usually between like 9 and 10 range Guaranteed each week. cut maker Especially, with some upside. He'd probably be in the same price range as Phil Mickelson had he been playing his yeah. normal game throughout the year. But, I, yeah, it's going to be tough to take a chance. There's going to be a... There's going to be a couple of Yahoos out there who just shove their chips in just yeah. the way they did on Jason Bowen. I swear, there's going to be two or three experts. I could probably name them for you. They're going to just shove the chips in. You're going to see him own them at like an 80 or 90% clip. And at 8000 he doesn't necessarily have to do a lot no. um, to earn his salary. But I think this will be a week for Furyk where he probably makes the cut. But I think he probably finishes, you know, T40, T50, somewhere around yeah. there. I don't see him being a factor over the weekend, so I'll probably stay away because I just think there's better values even dropping down yeah, no a doubt. few hundred dollars. So I'll be off him. Yeah, week. the high sevens is just loaded this week with guys who I'm interested in. Yeah. You agree? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Webb Simpson at 7,900. Jamie Lovemark, 7,900. Yeah, Gary Woodland, 7,800. Patton Kazire, 7,700. Are you just going to take all of them? 
I might just do that. I yeah. might just load up on those guys and maybe Matsuyama and Holmes and roll with them. Yeah. So there's a week where you have a handful of rosters where you just dodge those top guys, fill up on those mid seven to eight K yeah. range guys and, and kind of roll with it. I mean that yeah. that's worked out pretty well for for folks the last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. So I definitely think that could be successful. You look at a guy like Kazire He's just had a fantastic oh, yeah, he's season, been good. and he's becoming just more and more consistent. So the finishes at the beginning of the year, he he came out, played great. The first two events on tour, he yep. was in the top five for yep. both of those. Had a couple missed cuts, but since I think he's only missed one other cut on the season, it was a week when he was in the optimal lineup, of course. <laughs> but that's uh, that's the only other time he's missed a cut, and the finishes are getting better and better. So they he's are. becoming a consistent top twenty-five threat week after week. He was in the top ten again this past week and uh his, he hasn't he hasn't played here before but i know that he's going to be popular at he hasn't played in most of the courses yeah, he's played exactly. this year he's 7700 which is just a huge discount and he was owned by what a quarter of yeah, the field in gpps last week well it'd be real interesting to see what love mark is owned by because no he's doubt. a little bit cheaper even than that you know yep. he was 8400 last week now he drops down he's at what 7500 no, Lumark seventy nine hundred. I was at seventy nine. So he yeah. still so he drops by five hundred this week right. overall. Um, coming off of another top ten finish where he really gave it away. I mean, it just he broke did. my heart to see it this <laughs> morning because he gets to eighteen. All he's got to do is two putt. Of course, he's ninety feet away. Leaves it way short, misses, and just gets progressively worse in both of the holes in the playoff. I mean, it was really terrible yeah. on the on the last hole. I hit his approach shot just to the middle of nowhere, couldn't get on the green, and uh, and that was that. And then Brian Stewart. It took us course. 20 minutes into the webcast to mention the winner of last week's tournament, and that's kind of what I think oh. about Brian Stewart is just... Happy that, for the guy. I, I mean, Great. I love hearing awesome. stories like that. It's you know, exciting. I mean, it's not, you see a guy like Jim Herman win an event, and Vaughn it gives Taylor, him a, and that gives these guys a two-year exemption, gets them out of the match. So for that guy, that's that's his life right there. Where all of a sudden he's got a job for the next two years that he can actually. And you're count happy on. for him? I'll say so. I yeah. don't really give a shit. It cost me probably three hundred <laughs> bucks or so that he won the event. Oh, of, I would take three bucks. Yeah, I know. But I, I, I mean, I knew that was... When I was looking at the outcomes of the of the final three guys, I'm looking at it going, all right. Who would help you least? Right. Who is going to help <laughs> me the least? Well, Lovemark, I have him all over. <laughs> so that's not happening. On, I don't have, but not that many other people have. But I if, have if, quite a bit of on. Yeah, you had some on, so that... that I knew gonna, that wasn't happening. That wasn't going to happen yeah. for you. I was like, oh, if Stewart moves up, then that'll, that'll lose me the points, and that'll lose everybody else with on the points. Not the 0.6% who own Brian Stewart. No, but I mean, it'll help us lose the 10 <laughs> I know, I'm points. I am saying that. Yeah, the 0.6 or so. Who, I don't think anybody owned him in the 300. No, I, I don't think so. I the guy who won the three dollar owned them. He did, yeah, yep. and just yep. happened to load up on the other guys too, which is unbelievable. To hit all of those guys oh, with Brian Stewart God. in a six of six is pretty right. impressive. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't really anything that would have drawn you to Brian Stewart. And we always text week. back and forth. How many teams would you have had to make last week to have that lineup? A hundred thousand. <laughs> I might have found a Brian Stewart team at the 100,000 mark. Sometimes it's a million or 10 million. Sometimes, right. there, sometimes there is no iteration of teams that I, right. I could have possibly hit the winning lineup. Brian Stewart, maybe after like 10, 20, 50,000 picks, I could see me going down to that 5,800 age and thinking, yeah, let's maybe. throw him into five, right? So, yeah, it's uh, off on a tangent there a little bit. Should, should, we, drop, should, should we drop down? Any interest in uh, anyone in the low seven, six range? Well, I think in, in looking down there a, a little bit, one of the guys that I like who's never terribly highly owned but is playing pretty well right now is Scott Brown. Right. He is at, he is at 7,500. He's made the cut progressively, gotten better in his last three outings here, and he's been having a pretty nice season. He hasn't finished up real strong the last couple of events out. You know, but overall, he has been making cuts. He has shown the ability to have some upside. Um, you know, he's a guy who's been a little frazzled when the weather is picked up here and there. But, uh, you know, overall, I think that's a pretty decent play at the 7,500 range. And I don't think he'll necessarily be terribly highly owned. How about yourself? Well, I like Kevin Streelman at that same price at 7,500. He's had a sure. good tournament history here. I never owned much of Kevin Streelman ever, but yeah. I think he's a legitimate option. Now, we were talking about uh, another guy at 7,600 Smiley Kaufman this mm. week. 
I thought his yeah, we ownership. Had a debate. We had a debate on this. All I right. thought his ownership would be over, about fifteen oh. percent. Okay, so the over under is at fifteen. I will take the under this week. Well, no, you said ten, and I said fifteen. <sighs> I said ten to twelve. So how does that make to, the over said, under fifteen? I said ten to twelve. So you'd you'd have to we'd have to say it's twelve. No, no, and no, a half. no. You said fifteen. We're going to use your number of no. fifteen. I didn't say over 15, I said 15. Okay. Why? That gives me no leeway. So <laughs> so you don't think he's going to be home just because no. he has no tournament history. And he blew the cut last week. And, and he bit some people, and people last week. And people didn't but, just bite him, but he bit him in a, such a spectacular way <laughs> in shooting a, a 9 over 81. No, I get it. I get it. That uh, you know, people's eyes tend to be attracted first to tournament history when they see that. And the next thing is, what has he done the last few weeks? So they're going to look at the collapse last week. Right. And even at Augusta, there's still, I think, some lingering thoughts on, wow, he came in second into the last round and then was nine over in that round. So I think people are going to look at him. They're going to be a little bit nervous. I think, I think, I think we're both pretty close. I mean, we're not, we're not that far off in terms of what we think, but I think between 10 to 15. So do you like range. him? Um, I, I don't know. I think he has a game that fits this course pretty well. But the field is so strong this week. I would like him better if he were kind of back down closer to that seven thousand. Maybe what? He he was like in a he was a top ten price guy last week. He was well, a yes, monster. In that, but in yeah, that, I, in that I field. get it. But, but he's that's back down field. at seventy. Yeah, but look at the guys that are around him in price this uh, this week. Would you rather have Patton Kazire this week or, or Smiley Kaufman? I would rather have Kazire than Kaufman, yeah, but that doesn't absolutely. mean I don't like Kaufman. I like Kaufman more than a bunch of those guys. I like him more than Patrick Rogers, I guess. Yeah. I mean, but I'd rather. I mean, if I, I guess if I'm looking at it, I guess I'd rather go with a veteran like like Grillo at 7,700 over. A oh, guy would like you? Smiley. I think so. Oh, okay. I think so. I mean, I think I, he's he was just. I, I don't like seeing that sort of erratic kind of play out of guy. And I know that for the most part this season he has been pretty good, but there's a, there's just there's a lot of veteran names that that are right there. Um, you know, even if you look at a guy like Ryan Moore yeah, at 7,500. Yeah, he attracted my attention too. Yeah, yeah, he flopped badly at the Masters. He did. But that's really only the, the only one event this year where he's been just right. that terrible. It was yeah. one really awful round. So I think a, a veteran like that is, is priced pretty well that yeah. I, I think I would look at uh, I'd look at there too. And even uh, Bryson DeChambeau came down. I mean, he's another guy who, do you like Smiley or do you like Bryson? I think they're both, they're both young guys. You know, Bryson obviously has had less experience, but quite a bit of buzz yeah. over the last few weeks. He had a week off after his disastrous missed cuts. So. Yeah, but he, this is another course that really should fit his game oh, pretty absolutely. well. He's, yeah. he's going to blast it off the tee. Uh, you know, the irons are working. If he can, if he can hit a few putts this week, he should be right in there. So, I, you know, there's so many guys in that range. I can't see liking Smiley enough that I would say, all right, I'm willing to put 25%. In on him this week, so I, I think he he may come in as a bounce back play, kind of in my third range of players where I look at him and I just say, ah, people might be off of him a little bit, and if he does great, I want to have maybe ten percent of him on my GPP squads for the week. So I think that's okay. that's sort of where Smiley will will end up being for me this week. Okay, let's drop down a little bit farther than that seven thousand range, go into the six K range, and I know one guy that you like a lot that you mentioned during the DK T V skit is yeah. Will Wilcox. I think we gotta start paying attention to him again. I listened to an interview with him on the tour junkies the other week. They did a nice fun interview and he's the guy was a lot of fun to listen to just in terms of his take. He seems like he's really good at just letting a lot of the garbage just sort of slide off his shoulder. So if things are not going well, and he's got the DFS community jumping down his throat, which is funny to me. I mean, if people are going to be tweeting at him and wondering how he's feeling, wondering how he's doing, he's trying to give them an honest feel. Oh, I think my game is pretty good. And if he misses it, you see people just slamming him yeah. on there, which is ridiculous. So it's sort of like, you know, go fuck yourself, you know? <laughs> Get off of Twitter. Why are you being an asshole to this guy who's actually paying attention to you and responding to your tweets? You're never going to get that from Jordan Spieth or Jason Day. Those right. guys are never going to acknowledge your no. existence. No. And here you've got Will Wilcox, who's consistently interacting every week with these yeah. people, trying to give them a feel for what it's like as a PGA player, what it's like out there on tour, and how he's feeling about his game. And he's been saying over the last few weeks that his game is starting to feel better. He's found right. his stroke again after kind of losing it around the Christmas, New Year's time frame. And he finished in the top 35 a couple weeks back. Finished 15th this last week, so we're starting to see him on the upswing. Um, the one thing that is a knock against him is the fact that he is very popular. So coming down to 6,600, 
That's probably my biggest concern. That'll keep me from going in for a big position right. on Wilcox. Just because there are going to be a lot of folks there seeing are. him down there after playing well. And they want to root for him. He's one of those guys that people really want to see succeed. Yeah. Um, so I will own a share. I will own some shares of him there at 6,600. But I certainly won't be shoving in for you know a normal 30 or you know or more percentage. He won't be up in my core plays for the week. Right. I know our own Roger Casey is getting aroused this week because <laughs> Ali Schneider Jans is back in the field this week and at 6,400. He might not be one of his guys after the way he's played this year. <laughs> he, but he's playing great on the web.com. On the web.com, web.com he's had a couple good showings in his last couple events, so I think he's legitimate and we know Roger will be all over that guy. <laughs> Absolutely. He likes him almost as much as I like Martin Keimer, but I cannot. Well, Martin Keimer's here this week. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I know, and he played well in his last European event. He took a top 10, but before that, he was a disaster on the PGA Tour. It seems like so. he's lost his feel for the U.S. courses. Yeah, I have to I have to see some some more progression before I, I so, get back on his bad So you're only going to own him like 25%. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to drop right? down. Drop down. Right. <laughs> he's Not only 7,400, which is just silly to me not, so not gonna have your normal shares of them no well what about uh this week now that now that brian stewart has won do you, <laughs> do you love his price up at 7200 <laughs> yeah. i will own zero percent of brian stewart this week he's not gonna, as opposed to my ownership of him last week <laughs> yeah zero percent he's not going to continue that momentum going i hate when they do that on there the guy is it's still it's still brian stewart right yeah. I mean, he's he had a nice week he came through he won the event but Let's be safe. Fifty-eight hundred up to seventy-two hundred for him this week. That just seems uh, yeah. Well, we saw what happened to silly. dog shit Von Taylor after he won. He missed like six. Yeah, he's been terrible. Cuts. Jim Herman has done nothing. So it's just this, you know, the moons align or something for these irrelevant guys on tour, and they win, and then they go back to their same old mediocre ways. So anybody else that you like down in that range? Not really. How about you? I may take a little bit of Luke List. Um, Back on the Luke List. He, he was a guy, he was doing well the first round. And he was minus four. He misses a six footer on 18 to, on the last hole on the second day to miss the cut, which, you know, which hurt uh, about 20, what I think I had 15 or 20% of them last week on my team. So it, it did hurt a little bit. But uh, back down to 6,900. I like him in the 6,000 range as opposed to being up in the mid-7,000 range. He's right. a long hitter, so it should be a course that he does well at. And he has been playing well over the last couple of months. So I will probably take a small bite. He will probably be a 10% play for okay. me this week in my $3 lineups. That's reasonable. Lineups. Yep. Uh, David Hearn's been playing better as of late. Now, he had a good course history last week. So yep. I was on and him pretty heavily. Yep. And he finished really well. He was a top 25 last week. Mm -hmm. uh, he's still only 6,100. His form has been better lately. So I wouldn't have a problem rostering him. Now, his tournament history isn't as great as it was at Zurich. But yeah. Yeah, he's he's an all right guy in that six thousand range. Any uh, Tim Wilkinson love at fifty seven hundred again? <laughs> it's not a bad play. I probably will use him in some stars and scrubs. Not fantastic over the weekend, but he made the cut. Yeah, you know if you're down there at the six thousand price range and you make the cut, he came up pretty clutch. He did. I looked like second round. I didn't think he had a chance because he was when he, he plus two and they worked it back to he even. Was, and, uh, he was he min- was I think he was mi- I think it was plus one after the first round. Okay, and then he shot m- minus three in the yeah, second round. Right. So he was the guy that I was watching all that day. I had him on a couple of three hundred dollar rosters, and he charged through and made it. So at fifty seven hundred. He's playing great now. He's 8 out of 10 this season in terms of making the cut. And he's statistically, he's going to line up again as a pretty good play because his numbers are just getting better as far as the you know strokes gain, tee to green. Um, so a guy at 5,700, if he makes the cut, if he takes 50th or 60th, you've more than gotten your money's worth for him. So I don't mind. I probably will go back to the well again and and own a couple of shares, but not as many this week. It's not as clear cut of a stars and yeah. really low scrubs right. type of week, so it may not own quite That is much. totally the argument for DFS uh, with the popularity as far as the PGA Tour goes. Yeah. Uh, when else would anybody in the world outside of Tim Wilkinson's family 
be following no every way. one of his shots. Plays in limited events, so he's right. only no one cares about these guys. Year. And the PGA is blowing it because they're promoting you know the top 10, 20 guys, and you get the rest of these guys down the middle of right. Break. They're fighting for their livelihood. Right. That's why I think Will Wilcox gets it because he's embracing the DFS and community. He will get sponsorships because, because of, of it. that because people like him. Somebody will pay yeah. attention. They'll see the demographic between eighteen and thirty-five that absolutely loves this guy and they love right. his style of play. Yep. And they'll jump on board. They'll start putting them into a couple of different commercials and things. And it's going to be all due to the fact that the DFS community is out there interacting with them week in and week out. So we can't wait for... It seems like everybody around golf is frustrating for us to, to yeah, deal with these days in terms of... You know, the television of, coverage. I know oh you guys are God. very fond God, of the golf just, coverage, which is just horrendous week after week. So I'm blown away um, as to how ridiculous think it is. I they could figure it out just a little bit, you know? I mean, just add... One or if they had a, added a golf package, they could add a golf package oh, yeah, on Direct sure. TV. Yep. Charge me a hundred bucks during the season. I would. Is there a price you wouldn't pay for it? I'd pay. I'd, <laughs> I wouldn't pay <laughs> as much as the NFL ticket probably, but I would. I would pay probably a hundred dollars or hundred fifty bucks for a oh, full yeah. season long package. Oh yeah, I'd pay easily. Of better right. coverage. You pay a hell of a lot more like, than that because you pay a bunch for the lousy PGA Tour live crap. That's, yeah, what do, what, what do we pay for that? Like 40 bucks a year? 40 bucks a year. Um, and it's like, it's like two days for a few hours. But I actually like that coverage way, way, way better, better than the television It coverage. has those odd sort of breaks where they yeah. show you the scores. The same like, commercial. What's happening <laughs> right here? <laughs> over and there's, over. There's, yeah, there's nothing going on. But uh, it, it is. I, I like watching that in the mornings much better. You get two usually pretty good feature groups. They've yeah. gotten better at the feature groups. For they a have. while, I, I was like, if you show me Hunter Mayhan another week, <laughs> I know. I'm gonna make some phone calls on this. But yeah, I don't know. It would be nice if the coverage could pick up a little bit. The golf world hasn't quite figured out no. what they need to be doing. They need to just call the NFL. Hey, NFL, what have you been doing in terms of gambling, in terms of fantasy sports, in terms of fan experience? Right. We wanna do the same thing because we wanna make billions of dollars more for our game. But right. Hasn't happened yet. Maybe something that takes a little bit longer. So Yes, sir. Yeah. So we'll talk more about our sleeper picks, value picks, everything on the website. Uh, check Zachary out on Periscope on Wednesday night at 9-ish or so, whenever he rolls in. And uh, yeah, check out our website. We got tons of tools. Our model, uh, my hardcore core, uh, Roger Casey's preview article, Zach's daily spin. There's tons of good stuff on there. Also, if you want to check out the PGA DFS model, we've made that available now for an extra amount, an extra subscription just for that. We're completely separate as of now. Trying to get the subscription numbers lined up. We had a lot of different people that we brought over who right. had completely different subscription options and prices, so we couldn't merge everything right. together without trampling on a lot of people's toes. That's right. So during this first year through the transition process, we're running everything in parallel for a while, but we had enough requests uh, from FGI users to, to be able to check it out and subscribe that we have made it available on a month-to-month -month basis. So right. if it's something that you like, you know, go ahead and check it out. Um, this last week was the first week we made it available and it absolutely cleaned up. Um, it's a very contrarian style model from, right. from our editor on the PGA DFS model. Um, but the top 16 picks all made it through the cut. The number one pick of the week was, uh, was Jamie Lovemark. He was number one. That worked out. 21 out of the top 25 guys ended up making it through the cut for the week. So, yeah. you know, if you used it last week, you won, you won, you know, a lot of money. You were gangbusters yeah. through everything. You did really well. So it's it's something that's available. You know, check it out. It's it's not magic. It's yeah. Not I like gonna, how you put that. It's not magic, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it gives you ideas and, and sees a, a, maybe a, a different, different perspective. Because yep. a lot of things in the industry are very similar week to week. The models are very similar. Right. The value play is very similar, and so you see a the lot of weightings. You yeah. see a lot of ownership around similar guys. Right. This is giving you a little bit of a different look. So. Check it out if you like it. Great, you know, use it for month to month. And if you if you don't try it for a month, drop it. Right, exactly. No it's not deal. a huge investment. So, sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you have any questions for us or want to get a hold of us, it's info at fantasygolfinsider.com. Our Twitter handle is at fantasygolfers. Be sure to follow us if you haven't already. Otherwise, best of luck this week, and we'll talk to you next week. Good luck. I like when it goes, that's cool. <laughs> like a sent email. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs>
Trying not to knock any drinks over. Oh, we got to put up our... <laughs> you got to make a scared face like you're looking up the room. <laughs> how, did, how does the, the, script, the shot look? Yeah, funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is the shot of the week going to be uh, George McNeil, McNeil? Yeah. <laughs> just for the second time this year? Just qualified for not showing up for his tea time. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. I'm like, I scroll through for withdrawals and DQs after rounds, and I'm like, DQ? What? what a so moron. for a non-qualifying, or maybe club, he wasn't a moron. <laughs> maybe he was smart. He got the hell out of there. Whatever it was, I mean, yeah, he was three over. I mean, he could have just withdrawn, but yeah. just not showing up for your tea time is funnier. That is, yeah, that is a lot funnier. Like, woo, here we go. That's an easy one.